as the chief investigator for the Fulton County Solicitor General's Office, the second largest and busiest Solicitor General's Office in the Southeast United States, second only to Miami Dade, Metro Miami Dade. Um, I'm also the guy who started the Clayton County Schools Police when the Board of Education decided that they would start their own police force. I built that uh, agency up from the ground to where it is today. Um, proud of that. I also served as a commander of the Clayton County Drug Enforcement Task Force. Give me an opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Terry Evans. I'm originally from Dublin, Georgia, south of Macon, from any, any of you guys who know anything about down there. Um, I graduated from high school in 1988, joined the Marine Corps, did four years in the Marine Corps during that time. I served in Desert Shield and Storm uh, at some point, graduated, well, I got out in 92 with an honorable discharge and, and needed a job and I needed to find uh, something that I, I was used to doing. So I, I, I applied for law enforcement Department of Correction answered that call first. I did uh, Department of Correction for about seven years. Uh, during Wayne Fabian, and I am from South Georgia. I'm so far south that you have to go swimming. I come off of I-95, <coughs> excuse me, I have some sinus issues. I'm from the uh, Savannah area, Fort Stewart. I started my career as a uh, police officer with the Savannah Police Department, and of course, I'm not sure if this thing is working, but I, I rose through the ranks from patrol officer up to uh, investigated with the police department. Uh, there was a state representative by the name of Roy Allen that saw so much intentional and potential in myself that uh, he spoke with the colonel of the Georgia State Patrol back in 1992 and said that I'll be a valuable candidate for a hiring patrolman. The colonel of the State Patrol then reached out to me in my office in Savannah Police Department and asked whether I'd be considered to work for him. And I said, of course, I I'll take the job. So I started my career as a trooper in 1992, 93. I worked the Florida border to the South Carolina border on I-95. I worked the areas of uh, the inland areas, such as Hinesville, Fort Stewart, uh, Bryan County, so forth and so on. I well versed in criminal interdiction from I-95 by taking criminals off the interstate from drug uh, uh, seizures to asset forfeiture for a million dollars in cash. I worked that area for some time. I transferred to the metro Atlanta area uh, in 2000 at the Forest Park office where I then started my career, it, it took off uh, for the, uh, the essence of going through a rank structure. I uh, was promoted through the rank structure up to assistant post commander. I set up various road check with multi-agency uh, uh, multi around the state to come into the Atlanta area here in Clayton County the, uh, for the Forest Park office. I, hit, I brought in 150 officers around the state to do a multi-agency road check they went on the ground for 15 minutes when we apprehended our first drug seizure and also asset focus as far as cash was concerned. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm glad to have this opportunity to, uh, to talk to you. Uh, I'm a 33 year resident of uh, Clayton County. Uh, I'm also, I was also, I've also been married for 33 years, which I have my, my lovely wife and two of my daughters and my grandson sitting right here. That's yes, those, those guys chapter me on. I started my career with law enforcement in 1999 with the Clayton County Sheriff's Office. I did my entire career with the Clayton County Sheriff's Office, well, correction. I did one year with uh, Clayton County Prison, but my entire career was in Clayton County. Um, I served for 20, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. I served, I gotta get away from the speaker because it, uh, I get some feedback. But I served 24 years with the Clayton County Sheriff's Office uh, and with the prison. I did all my time here. I started out as a correction officer in the jail. Um, I rose through the ranks and uh, obtained the highest rank out, a major. Um, but during my tenure, I had an opportunity to work and serve with a lot of great officers. And I had opportunity to impact those officers' lives as well as I began to uh, rise in the ranks. Um, there was a stalking unit that was started in uh, Clayton County. And uh, I was tapped to uh, start that stalking unit. Stalking unit is a domestic violence um, unit. It's kind of what we did at the Clayton County Sheriff's Office. We served protection orders and what we did is we took that um, and put it on steroids. And what I mean by that is we, uh, we served protection orders but we went a little bit further than anybody else. Uh, what we did is we started enforcing the provisions of those orders. And there, because a lot of people said that a protection order was nothing more than a piece of paper 
and an order that nobody was held accountable for. And uh, as I did my investigations uh, during that time when I was preparing for that, uh, that unit, I found out that protection orders also resulted in a lot of people losing their lives. And most of the people that lost their lives was a result of a fire alarm. So when I wrote the policy for Clayton County, we became one of the first uh, agencies in this state that took uh, weapons at the order, as soon as the order was issued. Nobody did that before. Now I had some help. I didn't do that all alone. I, it always takes collaboration. I had to connect with the judges and we got that done. And as a result, um, I became the uh, um, chairperson for the uh, Family Violence Task Force here in, in Clayton County. And we was awarded the uh, state's award from the uh, Family, uh, Family Violence and Justice Center from the state of Georgia. So, especially in local government jobs, what is your position on this issue? Start with this. You're so right about that, Reverend Willard, but uh, I think if we are recruiting and retaining the best and the brightest, we can eliminate that. I think that's, that's what we see right now, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot of cronyism, a lot of nepotism down there, and a lot of unexperienced folks. And that's why you're getting what you're getting. Our jail is being played with deaths and injuries because you got a lot of unexperienced folks in those jobs. Uh, just an example, and I won't pick on my friends in Memphis, but those guys that are involved in this last thing with Tyree Nichols had three to five years of experience and they went on a specialized team. We, we can't continue to keep playing police. We can't continue to keep doing the Batman and Robin thing. We've got to get down to basics, do the right thing, and give you the service that you desire. As your sheriff, I will make sure that the best trained folks are on the road doing those kinds of things. I'll make sure that the warrants that are sitting in drawers are being served. I'll make sure that we have ample staffing inside the jail to make sure that your loved ones will not be injured or killed on my watch. That's simple. If we do our job. A statement, that's all. <laughs> well, that is a, that's a very excellent question. I'll share something with you guys. I've received a few phone calls this weekend from media outlets, I won't say which channels. They want to know what my take was on the previous sheriff, well, the sheriff, that's your interim sheriff, uh, hiring his mom and getting lieutenants paid and driving around in a county vehicle. Well, I don't want to get into dirty politics because as far as I'm concerned, what's at this table, these are the ones that you need to pick from and we're all good people and we're all good friends and we all got, we share the same thing and that's to make Clayton, you know, the best. And we want to do the right thing. But to answer the question, there is absolutely no reason none of that should be going on. As far as I'm concerned, it's stealing from the citizens. If part of our plan, because it's totally against one of my five star parts of my plan, and that's to rebuild morale. You cannot build morale if you have nepotism operating in your agency, because what you do is you divide your own workforce. Now they know the only way to get somewhere is who you know, not what you know. So then you don't have people that are out learning the job and doing the job for the right reasons. They're now doing the job for, let's say, you know, the, the term we use, they kiss some butt to get somewhere. So what we'll do is create a professional environment where people can excel on their own merit. When you have nepotism like what we have now for the current empty students over there, let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about that young man. He's our sheriff. He's the interim sheriff right now representing Clayton County chief law enforcement officer. He graduated the police academy in 2017. In 2019, June of 2019, he got promoted to a sergeant. And then he experienced what I call exponential growth. From June of 2019 to November 2020, he was a major. In November, no I'm correction. sorry, I'm gonna to have to interrupt. We don't have to degrade nobody. We don't have, because if you're a true leader, it's gonna speak for itself. And if people are wise enough to see that, they'll know the difference. And so I encourage, I just want to put that out in the atmosphere. So. To Victor Hitwall, the former sheriff, suspended all units when he got suspended. And there was some social media activity as to why that happened. And then the interim sheriff that's not present today decided to reinstate those sheriffs so he can campaign on this tough on crime image. It's all smoke and mirrors. Anybody that want to see, I follow the uh, a deputy. I, I do agree with Pastor Wheeler. Mental illness is not a place 
for the detention center. I understand that the mental illness, they do go out and they do commit small crimes, but those particular crimes are not warranted for the person to be incarcerated for some time. So therefore, as your sheriff, I will be partnering not only with the probate court, a section in the jail court and all just to house our mental illness department. And, and, and also in doing that, bringing them in, we would also work with the outside agency to get the jail accredited. The jail needs to be accredited this time in 2023. So as you're sure, we're going to work with the mental illness to get them in and get them out because that's not where they need to be and have them set up with programs and social workers to come help them and get them back into society where they need to be. Under my administration, as I said in the uh, previous forum, um, I will develop a special management unit, something that we do, don't currently have at the Sheriff's Office. And what's important about having a special management unit, we take uh, inmates, we have to uh, make sure that we identify them. Oh, we also have another process, another part of that question. So we have what is called 1013. 1013 is when officers come across somebody in, in the streets or maybe a uh, uh, deputy comes across somebody that we can not take them to jail, we can have them committed and we take them for evaluation. If the hospital determines after 24 hours they need to be submitted to Georgia Regional or some other medical facility, that's how we'll address that before we incarcerate. So I want to cover that part. So the, uh, the second part of that is we will have a special management unit for those that are incarcerated and have some type of mental illness so they can get the proper care and be um, uh, supervised by officers that have uh, crisis intervention training. And those officers will be better, better to handle somebody like that and we'll keep them separated from the regular population where they'll be uh, vulnerable to attacks and that kind of thing. So under my, uh, under my administration, we will have special management three priorities to bring about transparency in the sheriff's department. That's one part. The second part, if you all are elected to serve as sheriff, and it seems like several of you all have some background issues with our past sheriff, how are you going to work that out? Because it seems like there is going to be some tension somewhere because quite a few of you all have issues with our past share. So that's the two parts. Transparency should be that I should come to you and have meetings like this to hear what those problems are. I can't address the problem if I don't know what the problem is. So I've already committed with my team that we'll have quarterly meetings with the community out in the community to figure out what's going on. Second, I'm thinking, but I'm saying the transparency will begin with you knowing what's going on and we're going to conduct some audits when we get in office. You know, when I am elected your chair, first thing I'm going to do is c conduct an audit on the entire operation. I'll submit the findings of that audit, both financial and equipment and, and personnel, and then I'll come back and find out what it is you want me to do with what I've just found out inside that jail. You don't have any idea of what's going on, how your money's being spent right now, and we fail, folks. We fail. All of us in this room, we fail because we didn't hold the current administration responsible for what they've done. We allowed them to get this mob type atmosphere. And your part about getting along, I don't have that issue because I'm not running against Victor Hill. I'm not running, actually, I'm not running against these guys. I'm running for a chance to make a change and make a difference. So for me, I don't have that issue. Uh,